Amen. So we've read uh, how that Jesus had been up to Tyre and Sidon, and now he's got back into Israel and he's ministering. And of course, uh, closer you get to Jerusalem, the more he's going to run into these Pharisees and Sadducees uh -huh. and all the trouble that that brings along. Amen. And so um, they got back into the ship and head over to the east side of the lake. And in the process, and when the fellows had a chance to pick up an extra bit of lunch, uh, I'm sure Thomas or somebody said, boy, you got some pretty looking brown loafers there. And then Jesus said, speaking of loafers, fellas, how many loaves you got? And they said, oh, oops, uh, we only got one here. And uh, uh-oh. But Jesus took this opportunity, as we see so often in the Bible, like he Philippian jailer was thinking, oh man, what must I do to be saved? Paul took advantage of that opportunity and told him how to go to heaven, amen? There's more than one kind of being saved, amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. There's more than one kind of bread, too, amen? Amen. Uh -huh. amen. amen. Thank God, man, we've got the living manna mm -hmm. from God in heaven, and I'm telling you what, it tastes good, too. Amen. 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 The Bible says it's angels' food, amen, mm -hmm. on an occasion. So, um, so it's interesting. Now, the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one load. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be running short on supplies. So we see, number one, the disciples neglect. They forgot to take bread. Jesus used their forgetfulness to teach them a needed lesson. Sometimes, you know, we're in a hurry. We need something. So we just grab whatever the closest. Uh -huh. In that process, it might be some Wonder Bread or some kind of bread that's got a lot of air in it. Amen. It's full of hot air. It's full of gas. It might give you gas. Do you really want to eat it? <laughs> Jesus is going to... That's what. That's the lesson he's trying to teach these disciples here. Don't be quick just to grab something because you're hungry. Uh -huh. Because you might grab something to hurt you. That's right. Amen. That's snack food. There's a reason they call it junk food. Amen. Uh -huh. now, I hope somebody's writing this stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> this will preach, man. This will preach. Come on now. Amen. So we have three points. The disciples' neglect gives Jesus an opportunity to teach them a lesson. So number two, we see the evil. He's, he's, he teaches them to beware of the yeast of religionists and world leaders. Yeah. Yet is it is it just the yeast or the doctrine? Amen. The leaven. Yeah. He calls it the leaven. Uh huh. Which uh, Matthew, he's going to help us understand it to be um, the doctrine. Amen. Yeah. Let's look real quick at that. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 6. Matthew 16, 6. Now here. out there. 
you might latch on to something because it sounds like it's God's words. It's, it sounds like Bible, but it may not be Bible. That's it right. Be, it may be a perverted version of the Bible. It might be some iniquitous translation or uh, use of Scripture. So you better know the Scripture. That's right. I've, uh, you know, I've, the truth is, see, like, in my computer, I have saved all kinds of documents. I've made a lot of tracks that I've never printed. Some of them, uh, as late as, uh, you know, since 2003, I've made some in 2003. So I've been going through my computer recently, because I'm looking for one of my documents. You know, we have some documents that are good in tracks on uh, what to do in case the uh, child services is knocking at your door, right? And, uh, well, I finally found it yesterday. So we printed that up, too. So we've got two pamphlets now out there to deal with uh, what to do when they might come for your kids. Because, you know, we have a lot of young families in our church and kids. And there's a real good chance if you're a homeschooler and you love your children and you're saved, you're going to have trouble. Uh-huh. Right? Amen. Your neighbor or somebody's going to turn you in. Yeah. And conveniently, uh, going to get you in a mess if you don't know a little bit about the legal system. You know how to be careful about these things and I'm warning you, just like Jesus tried to warn his disciples, I'm trying to be a real pastor. Amen. Yes. Amen. And uh, so in that process, I'm going through and looking at all these things, and so I'm finding a lot of these old documents that I'd saved and that uh, I'm anxious to print and looking forward to print because it fits right in with some of these things that we're learning. But Levin's defined by the Lord as false doctrine. Man. So we have to be aware of these teachings. Sometimes we right. think, well, I'm going to grab this thing, it'll be all right. In my process of going through my computer, I found an old document that I'd started several years ago. I was asked one time to comment on Joey Faust's doctrine and his beliefs, and I was given this book to critique. So I sat down and started critiquing that book. And uh, I'd only went through like two pages of it. That's, that's all I'd gone through. And yet I have about six pages, and uh, I'm reading what I had written. And I would started out writing this uh, critique by discussing the simple truth. Do you know how to spot a counterfeit? Because how they train the Secret Service to spot a counterfeit bill? It's not hard. It's real easy. You think they spend hours and hours studying all the different counterfeit bills and all the counterfeit things that they could do? They do not. All you do is just study and study and study the authentic. Right. Amen. The true. That's right. And by becoming so, so, so familiar with the truth, uh -huh. when the counterfeit comes along, You'll spot you can it. spot it. That's, That's right. right. That's all there Traitor is to finding out what's counterfeit. And it's so true about doctrine. Uh -huh. That's right. And about the things of God. If you know what the Bible teaches about salvation. There's nobody going to come along and teach you then something that's going to tell you, well, yeah, you're saved, but you might have to burn a thousand years in the lake of fire if you did something wrong after you got saved. Mm -hmm. That's a bunch of baloney. That's right. And Jesus is warning his fellows, oh, these are young disciples, so he's training them still. They're still involved in their discipleship. You know, if you were to t try to disciple 12 knuckleheads at one time, it might take you three and a half years. <laughs> we believe in discipleship. And we believe it'll probably take you at least probably uh, nine weeks, maybe 12 weeks, depending on how often you get together and go through discipleship. But Jesus is discipling the 12. And again, he's trying to caution them and warn them. Sometimes because something sounds like it might be uh, scripture, it may not be scripture. And for sure, you got to watch out because at that day, of course, it was most of the Pharisees and Sadducees that were jealous of Jesus and all the followers that Jesus had and the truth that Jesus really was the Son of God. And so when it's all done, they're going to make sure to help have made the arrangements to kill Jesus. So you better be careful because the devil is a deceiver. Amen. Amen. And a lot of people in the world are deceived. Uh -huh. Now, what is leaven? Well, again, we know leaven to be basically what we call yeast. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make you up some bread, get you some some sourdough uh, flour, add some water, and you can make up some brick with a little pinch of salt in there, you know. And you can make a flat bread. Uh huh. 
the Bible speaks in Exodus how that they were having the Passover oh, man, man. and how that whenever they celebrate the Passover, they're not even allowed to have any leaven in the house. Leaven bread in the house. Uh huh. Because mm -hmm. in the Bible, leaven is a picture of sin. That's right. Mm. And sin is that away. It gets a growing and growing, and man, it can get out of control. You know, some of you ladies know if you've ever made bread, you know, you can make up that bread, put a little bit of yeast in there, and then you just let it set, don't you? Why are you letting it set? Because that yeast is spreading uh -huh. in that dough. There you go. And pretty soon it's full of air. Uh -huh. There's a gaseous exchange going on there to where there's carbon dioxide being formed, and it's bubbling inside there. That's why then when you take that bread then and put it in the oven, and bake it and come out and then you cut it, it's, it's got all these bubbles on there. You see it's got all these craters on the surface of the bread because that's where it was bubbling and right. all those all that air was being made and it was poofing up. If you let it poof up too much, it gets too big, you know. You can't <laughs> fit it in the oven, but it's just full of hot air. Well, that's the way it is with religious <coughs> right. Hey, radio and you hear all kinds of gas bags. <laughs> <laughs> yes, full of hot air. Sounds like they're religious. Sounds like they're talking about God. <laughs> These are deceivers, like the Bible warns us. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, amen. It's easier to swallow. Satan's yeah. got his ministers that appear there like ministers go. of light. Like Satan can appear as a minister of light himself. <laughs> so you have to be careful. It's softer. And that's what Jesus uh -huh. was trying to warn the disciples about. Smoother going down. Don't get caught up in this baloney. Get sidetracked in all this baloney. Uh huh. Somebody had sent me a thing on uh, on again the Talmud and how these silly Jews have the literally just exactly like Jesus said, how that they study their Talmud and it's teaches in the Talmud. You are to know the Talmud more than you know the Bible. Uh-huh. And all that is just the writings of these men. Right. And it's the traditions of men. Right. So I made myself a little note here on this business of these, uh, this leaven. I said here, uh, their error was tradition. Yeah. Did we just read that? Mm -hmm. Where Jesus told us in the last chapter how yeah. they err through their tradition. Right. Yeah. Right. They right. hold the doctrines of men more than the doctrines of the Scripture. Know, right. know their doctrines of men and hold to that more than the, the Word of God. And have their ceremonies for washing their hands a certain way in cups and so forth and everything. Touch not, handle not, taste, taste not. But they, they, they've neglected the more weightier things of the law. Right. That's right. So their error was tradition. Man-made traditions. Are you listening? Yes. Yeah. Jingle bells. Yeah. Pride. Man, they were cocky, son of a gun. So cocky, they're going to crucify Christ in a little while. That's right. Give them some time. Uh-huh. I think they do God's service. There was tradition. It was pride. It was ceremony. Oh, we got to have these ceremonies. we got to have these rituals. we got to have the these rites. we got to have the suits, certain garb that we wear. we got to have certain programs and things that we say. We call one another rabbi. We call one another master. We call one another... Yeah, Father. We'll go there in a minute. What else could we say there, Aaron? Was sign seeking. Yeah. Uh huh. Because they were asking Jesus for signs. He said he wasn't going to give them those signs except sign the prophet Jonah. And like he was three days and nights in a whale's belly, he'd right. be three days and night in the heart of the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. They were sign seekers. I wonder if you know any Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Then lastly, that's us. Their error was hypocrisy. Yeah. Right. Because this is the biggest thing Jesus hit on all the time about them. It was their hypocrites. Yeah. What's a hypocrite? Well, when the Greek actors would act out their plays, they would have a mask. One mask would have a smiley face, and the other mask would have a sad face. So in the reading of the drama, if they were supposed to be happy, they would hold up the happy face. But if they were supposed to be sad and there was a tragedy, then they would put up uh, the sad face. But all the time, they were really behind that mask being their self. And so that's what a hypocrite was. A hypocrite is an actor. Right. Yeah. You know it? Amen. So it's interesting that Jesus tried to use this as an opportunity to teach his disciples something. To watch out for, watch out for this teaching mm -hmm. of these hypocrite, devil, Pharisees, and Sadducees. Now again, when it comes to this religious community that Jesus was dealing with, there was two extremes. Uh huh. Right. Just as sure as in the world today, we got Chris and Dumb, and there's two extremes among Chris and Dumb. Amen. 
there's a more fundamental side of things that believe in the fundamentals and they believe in the basics of taking a literal interpretation of things, especially when it comes to God and the Bible. And the Pharisees themselves really were of that right. extreme. Right. That's right. They were known to be the fundamentalists of their day. And the right. truth is we kind of we, we kind of despise and look down on our nose at fundamentalism. Because fundamentalism never goes far enough. That's right. That's right. They talk the talk, but they will not walk the walk. That's right. yeah. Especially our fundamental Baptist brethren. God bless them. And, um, oh, oh, oh. and the Pharisees were of that line. They believe in the literalness of the Bible. Never mind doing it, but they believed in it. <laughs> right. They, hear they the believed word. in like four or seven fundamentals. The Presbyterians uh, reduced it now to four, and though originally it was seven. Yeah. Uh, but see, baptism was always missing in the listing. Mm -hmm. And that's where Baptists, uh, the real fundamental Baptists, uh, stand outside that camp. But then on the other extreme, we have the liberal. And, you know, we would classify like our Presbyterians and Lutherans and uh, uh, Methodists in that camp. Because they don't believe in the literal virgin birth of Christ. They don't believe in the uh, blood atonement of Christ. They don't literally believe the Bible. But yet they give lip service to Jesus, right. Christianity, and dying, and right. going to heaven, whatever that is. <laughs> you know, they know there ain't no heaven, and they pray there ain't no hell. Basically, yeah. that's 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 how liberal they are. Yeah. Right. Their feelings, and uh, they just teach psychology mostly. Right. And yet they don't take the Bible, baptism literally. You know, they'll sprinkle your kids and all that stuff. You see, this is, and so so that's what Jesus was dealing with. On the one hand, there was these Pharisees who, who honestly believed that because uh, they had this heritage and they're going by the instructions of their fathers who killed the prophets, um, uh, that they represented that true mosaic belief and trust in Moses' words and that they had the word of God and they're acting, therefore, by all their traditions and they're the extremists. And yet you had your Sadducees who right. did not even believe in a resurrection. Right. The Sadducees are known for two things. Number one, they didn't believe in angels. Right, right. And they didn't believe in a resurrection of the dead. That's right. Uh -huh. First Corinthians 15. And it was said that Herod was a Sadducee. Okay. And so it's kind of interesting. Let's look at uh, Luke chapter 12. One of the things you know, Jesus, even at the time that we're reading here, Jesus is walking around and the disciples are showing Jesus the temple. Oh, check this out, Jesus. Look what we just did here. Look here, ain't that wonderful that Herod's rebuilding our temple? Wait a minute, I thought the Maccabees <laughs> restored the temple and all that crap with Happy Hanukkah. What's Herod building the temple for? <laughs> right. This is Herod's temple. Jesus is walking around. That's right, that's Solomon. And they're trying to impress Jesus. Hey, Jesus, check these big rocks out. Man, these are some big stones, no doubt. Go all the way back to Solomon's temple. And they were trying to impress Jesus. But I remind you, Jesus cleansed the temple twice. Uh huh. Once at the beginning of his ministry and once at the end of his ministry. Right. Jesus himself was trying to cleanse the temple. Does that tell you anything? And yet he predicted, fellas, I give her about 40 more years and every one of these stones are coming down. And as much stock and value as the Jews in general put in their temple, Jesus let them know that, hey, man, that temple, you guys ain't going to have nothing to worship in and nothing to worship in a little while. Because that's the tendency of a Pharisee. Amen? Amen. Amen? Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable number, a multitude of people, insomuch so much that they throwed one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And Jesus warned them about staying on a street corner, putting on a big show, right. having their prayer shawl on there. Right. You know, the Jews were into their prayer shawls, and they got to wear their prayer shawl. And, you know, hopefully you'll ask them about why they got all this junk hanging, up, hanging down from their belt so they can tell you all about their prayer shawl. Because they like to make big phylacteries and get on the street corners and pray and put on a big show. And ain't got nothing to do with God. <laughs> right. Looks like a Christmas tree. It's just an act. They're just actors. Amen. Uh-huh. Just actors. Just cheap actors. God save us from cheap actors. 
Amen. Amen. So it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Let's look at uh, Matthew 23 now. Uh-oh. Because we know this uh, is the jet. Look out. You know your Bible very well. You know this is the jet. <laughs> Get ready. This is Jesus my Jesus. Jesus really lays her out here pretty clear. Oh, yeah. When we look at this chapter, <laughs> this is my you can't but easily look at a particular church. Because it seems to fit this church so well, even though, again, Jesus was talking about these Jews of his day. Right. In Judaism. Yep. Because Jesus knew where it was headed with all these man made traditions. He said in verse 2, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, all therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. In other words, when they quote the Bible to you and say, Well, here's what the Bible says. Oh, yeah, well, you do what the Bible says. That's a given. People say, man, it's soul, there's church, there's church, man, it's, it's got a new version, but it, it wins soul, man. Hey, God can use a jackass to win soul. That's no problem. The Word of God won't return the void, man. Amen. There'd be people in there sitting around chick tracks winning people to Christ. That ain't got nothing to do with bearing if it's a 501c3. Like Dave said, there's, there's Bible studies at Ford Motor Company. It's a 501c3. <laughs> Or no, it's it's for profit. It's not a not for profit. Amen. Uh, there's all kinds of corporations that win it sold. So what? That don't mean a thing. That just means you can't bind the word of God. That's right. The word of God is going to save souls. I don't care how it's presented. That's right. Amen. That's right. But God does So Jesus said, yeah, if they're telling you something that's Bible, yeah, it'll, it'll work. Go by what they say that's Bible. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't yeah. follow their devilish examples. Amen. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Yeah. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. See, it's all that putting on the show. Yeah. Right. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. And to be called a man. <laughs> but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all your brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Uh -huh. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. So it's so interesting. Of course, we see there's a particular church. They're in on calling their priest father, aren't they? Yeah. Right. I mean, straight up violation. Right. What do they have to do with Jesus Christ? It's not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Amen. Okay. Right. Same but he that is greatest. Oh, there it is. See, circle the underline. Your King James Dictionary just kicked in there. That's what the word rabbi means, greatest. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Right. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be a base, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Here it goes. But woe unto you. Oh, my. Uh-oh. You see a woe, that means there's a curse being put on somebody. There's eight of them here. Woe unto you, scribes. Pharisees, hypocrites. Now, again, who did he say? Copiers of the Bible, scribes, yeah. Pharisees, yeah. hypocrites. Six times he's going to hit that word hypocrite. That's right. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering in to go in. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses. Yeah. See, they'll plot and scheme. Yeah. Figure out how to yeah. get the inheritance. Yep. To right, steal a house off yes, from underneath a dear little widow. Yes, Instead of doing her right and taking care of them, having her family and take care of her right. Yes. They'll do everything they can for a dollar to steal some woman's house and for a pretense make long prayer. Yeah. See, yep. When they're called on to pray, they got to not just pray, they got to draw attention to themselves by praying a long prayer. Mm. And the truth is they're plotting and planning to steal somebody's house Monday morning when they go to the office. That's right. There it is. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Uh-oh. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye come to sea and land to make one proselyte. Yeah. If they know one dude on the other side of the world that wants to convert yeah. to Judaism, yeah. they'll spend every dime they got to get in a boat and get over there to win that man. Yeah, but them. when they win that man, yeah. they'll win him and get convinced yeah. him to so much be their disciple yeah. that in the end, that man's going to hell twice as fast. Yeah. Uh -huh. Too cold to cult of soul one. Yeah. They'll compass land and sea to make one proselyte, and when he's made, 
ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Yeah. Uh huh. Because they're fooling around and committing acts of homosexuality on these children and so forth, so on. And, and you know, the papers is full of it. The kid ends up growing up to be a pervert. Mm hmm. Hating God. All because of something the fathers did to them. Right. Dressed like a mother. <coughs> Verse 16, woe unto you, ye blind guides. Bl five times he's going to mention them again blind. Amen. Calling me. Which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. See, money means too much to him. Right. And I'm telling you, this sure fits the sort of the Lord publications that somebody's been sending me in the mail lately. <laughs> well, well, these Baptist preachers are always, and that buck, it means everything to them. Everything's got to have a buck attached to it. Right. Ye fools and blind. Oh boy, that's hard. For whether it's greater the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he's guilty. Ye fools and blind. For whether it's greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by the, all things that are on. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, Swear by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Yeah. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Again, notice how their emphasis is on the tithe. Mm -hmm. And oh man, you gotta make sure you bring in, make sure you bring in the church now ten percent of the of your uh, yeah. dill weed. I mean, don't let nothing slip now. You're supposed to bring in that ten percent. That's right. I mean ten percent of everything, ten percent of your money, ten percent of your chicken eggs, ten percent Oh, yeah, we want to make sure we bring in that 10%. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ye pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin. I mean, make sure you bring in that 10% of your seasoning, too. And of omitting the waiter made us matters of the law. Wait a minute. Shouldn't we be concerned about God's law yeah. and judgment, like judgment and mercy wow. and faith? Oh, no, that's not nearly as important as that 10%. <laughs> Come on. These ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. Right. See, there's some things more important than the tithe. That's what Jesus Christ told you. They're right there in plain language. Wow. That's right. Well, yeah, right. you never hear that preached. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Why? Because they're blind guides. They're dumb dogs that cannot bark. That's right. uh -huh. what Jeremiah said. Greedy. Which strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. Now, that's a lot of swallowing. I don't know how you're going to put it. <laughs> I mean, they're all, oh, let's make sure we keep them gnats out of here. Let's keep them gnats out of here. You know, they're running all over trying to keep the flies off the pig. Yeah, you basket. worry about the little things with the big Meantime, thing. they're eating maggots and all. Yeah, I mean, what? How stupid, you know. Come on, guys. Whoa, oh, you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup. Oh, look at that cup. Check that out, man. I clean that cup personally. Man, look at the shine on that cup. Man, there's a glass. It's got a beautiful shine. It's clean, super clean on the outside. Wait a minute. What about these maggots and all this green stuff inside the cup? Oh, don't worry about that. This is the outside come nice and clean. Shouldn't you go ahead and drink out of that? No! It's full of poison! You clean up that outside of the cup and up the platter, but within are full of extortion and yeah. excess. Yeah. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. <laughs> That's the most important part. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That the outside brother. of them may be clean also. Uh -huh. And that's why we resent the fundamentalists so much. Yeah, exactly. Their emphasis is so much on, on the outside. That Christian haircut. Yeah. I think you need your haircut, boy. I mean, let me get the, let me get the tape measure out. I mean, your dress may not be long enough, sweetheart. You might have to take that hem out. That's right. And we got these Pharisees and these colleges. And they're spitting these little robots out that look like Christians, but believe me, inside, man, they're committing adultery and right. wickedness and incest That's and right. all kinds of wickedness. Yeah. Left and right. And there seems to be a certain camp over there in <laughs> the Chicago area. Hammond? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Cookie factory. Oh, you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites. Because that seems to be the best thing they produce. Yeah. They can ring your doorbell and lead you to Christ. Comes to live and write themselves, they can't do it. Because, like the former pastor who's dead now admitted in court, yeah, he's had affairs with one of the little ladies there at the choir, but he can get away with that because he's the man of God. No, you ain't, fool. You disqualified yourself from being a pastor as soon as you 
committed adultery with that woman. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact that her husband found that she wasn't interested in fooling with him no more after that. Won't you scribe first, ye hypocrites, for ye are likened to whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful out, oh, come on, but are within Jesus. full of dead man's bones and all uncleanness. Yeah. yeah. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and <coughs> iniquity. That's right. Won't you scribe the Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we'd been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wherefore ye be right. witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them that killed the prophets. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're still kill me. That's right. You're, you're the same kids. Yes, you would. The acre don't fall that far from the tree. That's the whole point. If Jesus were here today, man, the Pharisees would rise up and kill him again. That's right. Yeah, that's uh -huh. right. They didn't learn no lesson. Amen. Verse 32, fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Oh, I love this. Man, he's getting strong now. Right? There's a heat down. How can you escape the damnation of heaven? In other words, what Jesus was saying is, I'm not going to tell you how to be saved. How are you going to escape going to hell? How are you going to get a chance to go right. to heaven? I'm not going to tell you. Yep, riddle me right. this, Batman. That's what Jesus is telling me. That's right. So maybe Jesus wasn't the great soul winner like you think he is. Yeah. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city That's to right. city. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Yeah. Verily, I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thee, or gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name mm. of Amen. the Lord. Amen. So, wow, that Jesus nailed them. Uh, yet not just them of that day, but he still nailed them today. Amen. That's right. God forbid that we That's right. can be accused mm -hmm. Correct. of being a hypocrite. We be misled into this deception of the deceiver. Mm -hmm. To think that we can bring in <coughs> that we can Christianize. pagan yeah. celebrations <coughs> and Christianize it. <coughs> to make it okay. But no, it's not okay. Yeah, you just wash the outside of the cup. It's not okay. No, it's so interesting because Paul dealt with this too. Let's see what Paul told us as a church. Yeah, sure. amen. He warned us about living in our church. Yeah, uh -huh. right. <laughs> and in 1 Corinthians, he said this, remember? Amen. Yep. We're we going through it in Sunday Hope school. So. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, let's go to verse 6. Your warning is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Again, he's warning us that just like yeast, you mix it in there, and next, next thing you know, you got a whole loaf of bread, big old puffed up thing, because you put a little bit of yeast in it. Well, that's the way it is with sin. That's the way it is in your life. That's the way it is in the church. You can't wink at it. You can't just let it go. It's got to be judged. It's got to be taken care of. He said there, your glory's not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. See, it keeps spreading and spreading and spreading. Yes. Yes. These, these churches make a big mistake when they say, well, uh, we're not going to emphasize the King James Bible the Word of God. We're going to let the people have their own version in their pew if they want to. Right. Yeah, I agree with it. If they want to buy it and use it, great. Because we have them right over there on the shelf. We have no problem with them. Mm -hmm. We like to compare them and make fun of the other versions. Of hey. them. How stupid it is. Hey. They think it's the Word of God. That's right. right. Expose it for what it is. You know, you know, Amen. We're not like those churches that uh, you know, are ignorant, proud of it. Hey, and we have a nerdy piece of literature. We have a lot of literature. We're not afraid to back up what we believe with the proof and the truth. Amen. Amen. Right. 
Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity. Yeah. Amen. And what? And what? And truth. Amen, sincerity. brother. That's you right. See? No wax. Whole, yeah. percent honest. Sincerity and truth. 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 Amen. You see? That's why... Some long tongue woman in the church, amen. Somebody railing on somebody in the church, somebody claims to be saved and out there drinking alcoholic beverages. The church is a discipline, get right. rid of them people. <coughs> yep, he tells in verse 4 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together, my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. This was somebody committing fornication with his father's wife. That's right. In the church. See, the church is supposed to be known to kick people out of the church if they don't do right. That's right. Amen. They're living like unbelievers. No, you're supposed to be a believer now. Sorry, we can't even sit down and eat with you. Uh huh. Yep. People say, well, they're a part of my family. You know, our family's having a little get together. Well, that's interesting. Which family? Yeah, amen. Right. Verse 9, I wrote it to you in an epistle, not to the company with fornicators. <coughs> Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, but then must ye needs go out of the world. Mm -hmm. But now I've written unto you not to keep company of any man that is called a brother. Amen. Uh -oh. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the brag that people tell me is, well, you know, that's family. You've got a kind of weak family. Oh. It's your brother! It's really your brother! Holy mackerel! Talk about not taking the Bible literally. Right. Oh yeah, we talk about it spiritually. Oh, that's my spiritual brother in my church. Oh, there's no denying that. Right. Well, he's talking to the church, amen. Right. And yet they turn around and will think it's because it's their real blood brother. They're supposed to sell and eat with them. No, no, you're not. <laughs> that's right. If any man that's called a brother be a fornicator or a covetous, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about your brother or your brother-in-law, whoever he is. That dope smoking fool. That woman chasing the idiot. That'll preach. You ain't supposed to be going over there and eat with him. Amen, brother. Yeah. Supposed to stand outside the bar and preach to him. Amen. Yeah, amen, amen. brother. Amen. amen. Covetous or an idolater or a raider or a drunkard or, such, or an extortioner. With such a one, no, not to eat. You ain't supposed to eat with him. Amen. There you got God in plain black and white letters telling you something. Oh, um, oh, well. Where are we going this week, sweetheart? I'm <laughs> saved. That's right. Yeah. I'm going Who's to have us over this week. Uh huh. <laughs> God help us. Amen. God save us. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. Help us. Well, we've gone to meddling today. Let's get on with our other two points to get this over with. Preachers, my time to eat here. Those God stopped bags. already. Love those gas bags. No, I think it's so fascinating yeah. that he said, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Yeah. The world. Because I've never heard a preacher say yeah, the religious leaven and the worldly leaven. What is the leaven of Herod? Yeah, come on. Yeah. That'll preach. Because we're all 501 C3s and in bed with the government, we ain't gonna kick that a lick. But since we're an unregistered church, we don't have to guard what we say. <laughs> if there's you're not a verse where God warned you, well, be careful of the government. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the teaching of the government. Oh, don't you want our tax deductible don donation? Right. So you can give out those slips of paper giving people permission to take it off their income tax? Just think all the songs you can say. Amen. Amen. A joke. I mean, what is this leaven of Herod? Yeah. What was the doctrine or teaching that Herod was giving them? Well, like I said already. It, it's it's believed Herod. It's believed that Herod was on that liberal side, and he was on the Sadducee side of things. That's why he's financing the remodeling and rebuilding of the temple that Jesus cleanses twice, and Jesus warns them, "Hey, you guys might be impressed, but it's all coming down in a little while, just forty years in the back." You know, whoa, whoa. That'll pray. Buddy, is that Rome? Is he a representative, an agent of, of Caesar? I got a new track I'm dying to print now that Herbie uh, Evans has written called We Have No King But Caesar. 
That was good, brother. And he did such a good job of showing how the churches, by becoming 501C, they've adopted that philosophy. That's right. We have no king but Caesar. That's right. Let his blood Caesar's be upon us. King. Yeah. Oh, man, that's dangerous. Amen. I ask you, is that not the doctrine of Herod? Mm -hmm. That Jesus warned you to stay away from? Free. <coughs> Free. I mean, is this government? It's a society. Saying we're going to accept some ministers with their sacred little duties. <laughs> Therefore, we recognize those churches as being charitable organizations. I mean, is this the state? When he said, beware of that leaven of Herod, is this the 501c3 tax-deductible non-for-profit status? Anything like that. Of the King's Chapel? I think it is! Because right. Jesus Not said, boys, more. beware of the leaven of Herod. Watch out when the government wants to get involved with you and your church. That's right. Uh -huh. Don't let them in. Amen. It'll leaven like them up. Like you shouldn't listen to the Pharisees, don't listen to Herod either. That's right. Don't listen to them stinking, corrupt bar attorneys. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Man, there's some preaching in here. Like I just find it. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the trail, my friend. Man, I'm telling you, man. I pity our dear brethren that never hear nothing. Because they don't know this. No, they don't. They don't want to know it. They're blind to it. Because mm -hmm. they're in it. Mm -hmm. They can't see the forest for the trees. Uh -huh. Our third point is verse 16. And they reason among themselves, saying, it's because we have no bread. <laughs> oh, man, they can't get it. Right oh, man. <laughs> Just missed it by that much. Thomas, you should have picked up an extra loaf when we went through town. <laughs> yeah. I told you I should have. Third, we see the danger in dealing with these religious rule leaders. Hey, Number one, man. there's the danger of being spiritually blinded and hard-hearted. Yeah, concerned uh, with the material uh, things, with the bread of this world, and not seeing what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about a spiritual bread. Right. Amen? Amen. Verse 17, when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, Why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. Now, he's going to ask seven questions. Very interesting. Hmm. He's going to ask seven questions. Because, of course, verse 21, how is it ye do not understand? So he's going to ask him seven questions here. Why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. Perceive ye not, not yet, neither understand. Have ye your heart so yet hardened? Amen. And that's the problem. That old that's hard right. heart. That's uh -huh. right. That's where it's at. See? Hard. They don't seem to get it. Now, earlier, remember in the last chapter? Remember in the last chapter, we have a Gentile lady, a Syrophoenician yeah. woman. Jesus is way up yeah. there, tired and sighted, yep. and he's ministering. Here comes this little lady. She says, boy, I sure need some help with my daughter. Jesus, please help me. And Jesus said, hey, lady, man, you know, God only wants me to take care of the children. I've got some food, and God don't want his food for his children given to the dogs. But she's sharp. She says, yeah, Lord, but. See, just like that, she figured she knew what Jesus was saying. She got it. Oh, yeah, you're right, Jesus. I ain't nothing but a dog. But the dog get the crumbs <laughs> under the table. Just throw me a crumb. Oh, she got it! And Jesus said, oh, this, look, at, look at this woman's great faith. A Syrophoenician, a, a Gentile woman had great faith. Here, Jesus with his own disciples. He's trying to explain to them something about leaven. They don't get it. <laughs> Little faith. She had great faith. Jesus right. said, oh, this great faith. I man. These guys have no, just little faith. They don't, they don't even get it. He's talking about bread. Now you should have brought some bread, Thomas. I told you not to bring that old rye bread. I got some. Here we go, you know, here they go, take it off. Danger number two, not seeing and understanding the Lord's provision, amen? Having eyes, see ye not. Having ears, hear ye not. Do ye not understand? Do ye not remember? So to try to help them a little bit, <laughs> yeah, I love Jesus. Uh, how he's tweaking them here. 
Uh, when I break the five loaves among 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? I bet Judas spoke up. He's good with numbers. They uh, said him 12. <laughs> I mean, them unlearned fishermen, I mean, they probably knew about counting pretty good because they had to count fish, you know. But. So he reminds them of the feeding of the 5,000. And then he see he, right along behind that, verse 20, and when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They said seven. <laughs> Can you see these clowns are still trying to get it? Now, what's he trying to imply by that? 12, 7. What's he trying to... <laughs> 19 minus 4 or whatever. Danger. Number 3. Given the Lord, grieving the Lord's heart. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? Yeah. <laughs> it had to be frustrating for Jesus. The disciples dwelt in our head. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I mean, the Syrophoenician woman, he called her a dog, and she got it. And she said, oh, Lord, the dogs get the crumbs. And us Gentiles have been getting the crumbs ever since, and we got a crummy religion, don't we? And it's a wonderful religion. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all we need. It's the grace of God. But the children rejected it. Right. Man, now I'm getting some of that, you know, breast of the quail. And, man, I'm getting, you know, I'm eating high on the hog and low on the chicken. You know what I'm saying? disciples couldn't understand this leaven was not talking about yeast <laughs> wasn't talking about yeast amen how is it you do not understand see they didn't understand that spiritual bread is more important than physical bread amen. Right, amen and the power of God was in the blessing of Jesus amen and when they took those little seven loaves of bread and a few fishes and put them in Jesus hands and he prayed over and then he handed it out to them Miller, and they handed it out to the four thousand Woo! Something happened. They collected seven baskets full, big, big old laundry baskets. I mean, leftovers. big baskets. Yeah, that was a leftover. When he fed the 5,000, they had 12 baskets full. Man, there's power with Jesus. Amen. There's power in the word of Jesus. There's leftovers. And the power of God was in the blessing of Jesus. Jesus began to talk about himself there in John 6. Yeah. He said, you know what, fellas, a guy needs to eat my flesh and drink my blood. He can have eternal life. And they started scratching their said, uh-oh. <laughs> what's he saying? He's December 25th, huh? They said, whoa, what's he saying? Amen. It's a hard saying. Verse uh, 53, then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live for Mm -hmm. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. <laughs> Who can hear it? It's still a hard <laughs> <laughs> And the Catholic Church of this day twists this out of context. Absolutely. It convinces millions of people to stay in their church. Uh -huh. And we'll keep eating Jesus. Yes. December 25th. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? I, saw, I love Jesus there too. Yeah. Notice how he ain't afraid if you get offended. Uh -huh. Hey, how how easy is it to get me to get you to run off? Yeah, he ran them off. Tell right. me what I can do to push your button and get you to Yes! <laughs> Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend you. Amen. What? He well, shall know. see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words yeah. that I speak unto thee, they are spirit, and they are life. There you go. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He is a guy. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, that's what he's talking Spiritual about. Spiritual man, understand yes, those sir. things. Verse 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. I will raise him up at the last day. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Amen. Verse 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. That's right. I am the bread of life. Amen. That's what it's all about. In Christ. How
Hallelujah. The true church is feasting on God's man. Amen. 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 Fast to the full. Amen. Amen. 16 11. But the world says, What is it? Where is it? Uh huh. <laughs> run to. There's a famine up here in the word of the Lord. Famine for the word of God. Amen. Amen. 8 11. Let's all stand by our hands in prayer.